Well, hello there, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm so excited that you have joined me today for uh, a session that is part of the intro to uh, G Suite, the G Suite for Beginner series here at Global GEG. I'm so excited to talk to you about Jamboard. It's a great tool, and I and uh, let's go ahead and dive in. If you're tuning in here live, let us know um, in the chat that you're here. Um, we are talking about Jamboard, so I dropped that link to get to Jamboard. It is an integrated tool, uh, an app that is available from uh, Google, so you want to check it out. If you're new to Jamboard, please check it out, and let's get started. So my name is Jennifer Hall, and I'm an educational technology specialist uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, here in the States. And uh, what that means is that I provide technology training for teachers and playing with them on the best way to integrate technology-infused lessons. And it is uh, a, the best job in the world, and it's been a very busy job right now with providing training for teachers uh, virtually uh, from my home studio here. So, so excited to share with you today. Um, I am a certified trainer and certified innovator. Uh, shout out to NYC19. We just wrapped our first year. And uh, I'm also an ISTE certified educator and national board certified educator. So that's a little bit about me. And uh, I've got all the socials. If you want to connect with me, I uh, would love for us to connect. So I'm actually presenting using Jamboard. So I'm kind of excited to do this. Uh, I've been using Jamboard with my teachers. It became a go-to tool. Um, and so it's going to be a lot of fun to uh, use it as a presentation tool today as well. So if it for our time today, um, this is geared towards beginners. So I'm going to be diving into the features. So goal number one is that you're going to learn the features of Jamboard. And then goal number two is hopefully you're going to gain some ideas for using Jamboard as we spend some time together today. So with that being said, the first question is, what is Jamboard? I have a lot of people say, I don't understand, what is it? And so we're going to talk a little bit about what is Jamboard and some ways you're going to want to use it. Jamboard is a collaborative whiteboard application that is both web-based and mobile accessible, and it is very easy to use, and it has a very streamlined tool set. So it's really a great tool to use with all of your learners all the way from the little, so from your kindergartners, your younger learners, all the way through high school and advanced learners for teachers, but also it's a really powerful tool for you to use if you're a administrator and you're working with your teachers remotely or you're working with your team members remotely and you need to have the ability to have a whiteboard because so, depending on what tools you're using, if you're using uh, you know, Teams, or if you're using Zoom or whatever, some of them have built-in whiteboard features and Jamboard has now been integrated into Google Meet. So if you're using Google Meet, it's available now in there, which is really cool. And again, this tool set is super streamlined, which makes it very easy for you to use it with students or teachers or administrators or anyone that you're working with. So let's dive in and let's start taking a look at the tools here, okay? so. Uh, I'm going to literally walk through the tools that are on the on the canvas here and uh, talk you through what are the features and some elements, the things you might want to take a look at, and how. And then we'll talk about some kind of level up ideas of things that you might want uh, to use here. So if we start at the top here and we work our way down, we're going to look at the first thing is it has pen tools. That's really where the power comes in. Uh, Jamboard was actually an application that was created to go with a physical jam board, an actual whiteboard that would be in a meeting space. And then you would use this tool and be able to collaborate and, and work with your, um, your colleagues in a meeting and so forth. So um, the main piece was the ability to, for you to write on it. So when you're talking about writing, you actually can uh, use these writing tools here and you've got a pen, a marker, a highlighter, as well as a brush. Those are your four options, which means it's going to give you just a different texture to it. In addition to that, you only have a handful of colors. You'll notice you've got the Google colors and you've got black and white. So again, streamlined tool options here. Then you've got your eraser. So if I wanted to write here, I can turn on that pin. I can pick the color I want to write with, and then I can annotate on my space here. So I can use it to draw. So if you were on a physical Jamboard, which like I said, that was the initial plan for this, 
you could use uh, the Jamboard, go up to the board and write on it. But if you're using a smart board, this works the same way. You turn it on to pen, you can go up and annotate on the board. If you're in a physical space, then you can write on a board. If not, you can use your mouse or if you have some sort of writing utensil, like I have this um, nifty little um, writing mouse. If anyone's ever seen one of these, it's a pretty cool tool. Um, I have it listed on my uh, resource page. We'll talk about that in a minute. But this is a really cool way you can use it to write. You can also use uh, the marker option. You can highlight any of those options. I can go in here if I choose one of those. I can change it, get another color. And notice it's going to give me a broader stroke. So this allows you to annotate on text or onto um, an image that's been added on there, which is pretty cool. So the highlighter is really good if you are working on something and you want to highlight a particular text. So as a teacher, you're um, wanting students to annotate something, you can do that. If you're working in a meeting and you're highlighting standards that you're focused on, you can have uh, your colleagues go in and highlight the certain things that you're working on or the steps of a process of an activity or a meeting or anything like that. And then the brush obviously is a little bit more uh, wide and it's going to be more of a, a paint option here. And so it kind of just paints it. Now, the greatest thing here is my favorite button, which is always the undo button. I can go up here and undo anything I've done. I could also clear my frame at the top if I want to erase all annotations that were made. So that's the pen tool set right there. Pretty straightforward for writing and drawing. And what's cool is there is a mobile app, which is a lot easier to use if you're trying to annotate with your finger or if you've got touch devices, this works really well. If you have a touch Chromebook, which is a um, great option as well. Um, seeing all sorts of awesome folks here in the chat. Thank you so much for tuning in here. Seeing some of my, my uh, Global GEG friends. Good to see you, Gerardo. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, Stephanie, presenting with Ban Jamboard. You like that? <laughs> I just thought it would be kind of a fun way to show the power of Jamboard um, and do it right there. Uh, so this is this is super fun. So many uh, uh, awesome folks here tuning in. Thank you so much. Well, I, good, good to see you, my friend. Uh, seeing people tune in from all over. So walking, we're going to continue walking our way through the tool. So over here, pretty straightforward erase. The other nice thing here, this works really well, is the fact that when I hover over the tool, set over here it will actually tell me what it is so that's great for your younger students to go hmm or language learners um, and just also folks that when they first see a new tool they're like i don't know what i'm clicking on they can hover over it and see what that tool set is so we've obviously got uh, the eraser here um, i also have the select tool which means that i can select anything that's on the canvas and i can move it around if i'd like to um, it allows me to resize things if i want to as well so as you can see, I added a few elements here and we're gonna talk about how I added those. And notice I can just drag and move things around just like that. So that's the select tool. You wanna make sure you've picked the right thing to be able to engage in a uh, Jamboard. So uh, moving right along, the, those are the main elements. They're the first couple tools. So the next really cool feature, and this is really where I see the power of using Jamboard is it has sticky notes. You might think, well, why would I want to do sticky notes? This is a great way for you to keep up with ideas for brainstorming, no matter whether it's a meeting or a lesson or an activity, is that you can go here and I can add in a sticky note. So I can say uh, Jamboard rocks. All right. I can go here and I can choose the color that I want for it. They do have one that is actually none. So it means it's going to be a transparent note, or I can use these colors right here. This is a great way to do like a stoplight activity if you're working with students or even in a meeting with your staff. If you're wanting to do a quick check-in, have them use the sticky notes to be like the all is good is green. You come up with your um, particular uh, color-coded system. So I see I got an English teacher here that popped on here. Love the sticky notes as an English teacher. Definitely it comes in handy for that. But if uh, just for uh, meetings, just dropping in ideas, putting people in groups and saying, all right, you're in group blue, you're in group pink, you're in group orange, and your ideas are added to that particular co uh, color right there. So I just hit that save right here and it's going to drop it. I can keep adding notes or once I have the note I want, I can uh, resize it. I can tilt it. 
Um, unfortunately, you can't format the fonts inside the note, but that's okay. I can go to the three dots here. As we know, anything Google, three dots, that's where the more stuff, that's where the good stuff is. So I can go here, I can edit it, I can duplicate it, I can delete it, and they've added this new feature with being able to layer things on a Jamboard, which really makes it a lot easier to have things you want on top to be on top or on the bottom. So I can make a note and I can duplicate it very, very easily just like that. So a couple other things that you can do with this is it's obviously draggable, which means it's a great way to do an activity where you put everything over on the left hand side and then you say, all right, drag it to the right or drag it to the corners. And I'm going to show you an example of an activity like that. Uh, great again for that brainstorming or check-ins with your students or with your staff. And you'll notice you do have a certain number of colors, so you could come up with a, with a legend or a, a guide of ways that you would want them to use those particular uh, co color-coded notes. Um, and it's just super easy for me to add that note uh, and just click that. I can go ahead and add another one and drop that in there. And when I'm done with it, just click cancel, move it where I want it to go. And you can also go ahead and generate a, a bunch of notes based on numbers or, or names and go ahead and have them on the um, canvas. And when you share this out, have someone just grab a note, drag it and use it however they would like to use it, depending on what the activity is. So um, as you can see, super easy to drop the notes on there. And I think that's probably one of my favorite features is that you can use it uh, with, the, with the sticky notes. Um, I love it. There we go. So yeah, loving the color coding. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Makes it super easy. So moving uh, along here, uh, the next option here is to add your images. And what's great is that you can upload uh, images from a number of sources. So I can actually upload images from my local computer. I can upload them from a camera, which is kind of cool. You can actually take a picture and have it go straight into uh, your Jamboard. I can use Google Image Search, I can use Google Drive or Google Photos. So if I click on this image uh, option here, I go add image and those options are all available. So I can easily drag and drop and upload any type of image that I want that I have on my local computer. So that's really cool if you have um, a PDF file that you've converted to a JPEG or PNG. Um, and you can upload it so that that image is there, which is great if you want to pull up text for students to annotate on, or you want to pull up a document uh, for a meeting or a planning session, and you want, maybe you want to pull up a lesson plan and you're collaboratively working with your team, you could upload that image and you can use the tools to annotate on it. Uh, the camera option, taking a picture if you want. The Google image search is great because it's going to bring in appropriate images and they're going to be approved to be put in here. So that's a great option. If you've got a, a Google Drive folder, easy to go and also Google Photos. So easy, easy to add a number of uh, image options um, right here. Next up, we have um, the ability to add shapes. So for those that were early Jamboard users, you'll know that the next two features were added more recently. And this was a game changer in terms of being able to uh, use Jamboard effectively in the classroom or just in terms of planning activities. Okay, so let's take a look here at some options of what we can do. So adding shapes over here, I have the ability to add in these shapes. So I can add in circles, squares, triangles, diamonds, and all of that. I can add them in and I can even color them, which is great. So I can change the outside color or the um, inside color. So it's great for you to create shapes, maybe a, a, a graphic organizer or a diagram that you want to be able to annotate on. So I can easily just say I want a circle. I just draw it. I go up here, my options are, I've got my border color, again, still the Google, Google options there. Uh, and I can also fill it with a paint bucket and I can resize this, reshape it. I can also hit the, again, the three dots gives me the more options. I can duplicate it and I can also reorder this. So if I wanted this to be behind here cause I'm creating a shape, I could send this to the back and now I've got that now. Hopefully one day they're going to add the feature of being able to group things um, so that you can kind of make uh, more design uh, 
friendly options, but for right now, the ability to order things is a great option and the ability to add in any of these shapes. And it remembers the last formatting you used. So if I wanted to draw another one, it's gonna remember that's what I wanted. And I can just keep drawing circles like that. Okay, I can also just hit the delete button, take that away um, just as easily as well. So that's the ability to add shapes. Again, that is a great option if you're trying to do a graphic organizer or a diagram in terms of planning an activity or in a meeting and you're brainstorming ideas. So this next feature, which is the text option, is was one of the, the best new features they added, uh, I wanna say maybe a month and a half ago, right before all of the fun of the holidays, they added the ability to go in and customize and add text. So you can add in several different types of text, display text, title text, subtitle text, uh, normal text. And so that means you really can customize what's going on there. And again, you can add in those custom shapes as well. And so when I go to add in text, I've got a couple of options here. When I, when I select, I wanna add a text box. I select anywhere I want. I can just start typing. It remembers the most recent one I used. So I'm actually gonna move this over here and put it right down here. I can, res I can resize it. I can go up here, I'm finish typing in my box here. I can go up here and change it from display to title and it automatically formats everything in the box down to that subtitle to normal. As you see, it just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I can move it anywhere that I want. Uh, I can also just stretch it and make it the, the size that I want to, which is great. So I want it here. I can go up and change my colors. Got a couple of color options here. I want to change this one to blue. And I can format it left, center, and right. So that means now I've got more options to be able to add in text so that you can have students type in a text box and kind of format it a little bit more. Now, I will tell you that a text box is, is only gonna have the formatting for that type of, so if I do a display text and then I wanna have smaller text, I'm gonna have to do a new text box. You can't have multiple types of formatting inside of one box, okay? So there the, there's that uh, global GEG, and if I type something out and I wanna duplicate it, again, there's all my options and I can reorder it as well. So that is the text option. And this is the one down here that people are like, what in the world is this laser option? This gives me a laser pointer, which is really good if you're presenting online and you want students to follow along with what you're pointing at, okay? So I can, you know, I can be pointing to certain things. I can't select them, but you can just follow my mouse. It gives me that highlighter option. So that's the left side toolbar right there, okay? So I'm watching the chat to see if there's any uh, questions uh, or comments so far that are coming in. Um, uh, I'm glad you're liking the updates, Steph. Good to see you. Thanks so much. Um, I love. You just have to watch. They keep adding more options, which is really cool to see what they've got going on uh, with the updates. I will point out if you want to know what updates have been added this is a magical option up here remember i said the three dots is where you find the good stuff if i go to the three dots here more i can see updates and it will tell me what new features have been added to jamboard it's loading a little slowly here but i promise the magic's coming here and it will tell me a little bit about the updates and uh give you some articles to access and get more information about jamboard okay um, and i just think that is super cool that you can find that information there so uh, moving along here, let's talk about a couple other things. This is the other best feature that they've added and that's the ability to add a custom background. So before when I first started sharing out Jamboards with my teachers, they would get frustrated because you couldn't lock anything and that means that if you shared out with students or you shared out with your staff members to work on and they start dragging and moving things you didn't want moved, you can now up load your own custom background, which means that you can create things. So like for this presentation, I created some stuff and um, then I downloaded it and uploaded it again. And now it's a solid image. Now it's not going to be adjustable, which is pretty cool. So I can go here, set my background. They give you a handful of options, plain white, some dots, some uh, I can change out to different ones. Uh, we'll go back to white. 
I always can do the undo, undo the most recent thing that I've done. There it is. So this actually is a background, which is an animated GIF. That was my other favorite thing. And if you didn't know this, this is pretty cool. You can upload GIFs to Jamboard and you can even do it as the background. So this is the entire background is a GIF so it can't get messed up, which is a great way to introduce content to students or to upload something that you want a process to be shared with your staff. So I can, uh, I've got a couple of solid backgrounds here, a black, a blue. Those are my options, but I'm, I'm absolutely loving the ability to upload a custom background and have it be um, something that now I don't have to worry about someone messing it up, okay? The other cool thing is, again, those three dots where there's more, I can go over here and I can actually download this and save it as an image and re-upload it, which is what I did for several of mine. I went ahead and lined it up the way I wanted it, built it in Jamboard, and then downloaded it and then uploaded it again. It's an extra step, but especially if you want it to not be something that's going to be messed up, you definitely want to use that option, which is setting your background and going right here to custom background and uploading your own. All right. So uh, some features I want to point out, this is kind of important stuff that I want to make sure you're aware of, is that uh, as awesome as Jamboard is, there are a couple of limitations, one of which is there is a max of 20 frames. That means you cannot have this un... I see Jessica says uh, a GIF is part of the background. That's interesting. Yeah, so I uploaded one that I had created so that it would be an animation that would continue on. Uh, I see a question here from David. Is there an easier way to share with students as opposed to entering all of their students' email addresses? David, that is a great question. What's awesome is here, if you're using Google Classroom, two ways to do it. I can go to share. I can go over here and I can grab the link, get this link right here, copy this link and post that into my Google Classroom. Or the nice feature is now that Jamboard is uh, visible in your Google Drive, when you go to do an assignment inside of Google, um, inside of Google Classroom, and actually I'll do it here real quick. That's what I love about great questions. I'm going to answer this on the fly here. So bear with me here. So if I go over here to my classroom um, and I want to share out a Jamboard, Jamboard is available as an option to attach an, an assignment in Google Classroom. And doing it that way will allow you to do a couple of options. So I'm going to go here into my demo class and I'm going to go to classwork. And I'm, I'm doing this quickly because I'm assuming everybody knows how to do an assignment in Google Classroom, but I wanted to make sure to answer this question for David. So uh, if I go here and I want to uh, create a new assignment for students, what's great is if I go to add, it's going to look for the most recent thing in your Google Drive. If I do Google Drive, it now recognizes that you were using Jamboard once you created the activity. So Jamboard is going to come up as one of my recent options. So here's my activity that we're going to, I'm going to share here with y'all in just a second. So I can go here. I've got the same options I would have for any assignment that I add as from a Google Drive file. Students can view it. Students can edit it. Students can make their own, it makes a copy for each student. So I can, one of two ways, just grab that link and post it. But if I do it this way, I get these three options. Uh, I see Jessica has a great question. Revision history, is it a thing now? For those that are curious, that was another thing that teachers were bummed about because they want to be able to see who does what on the Jamboard. They released it. It was kind of in beta. It was out there in the wild for a little while that you could do some shortcut keys to see the vert revision history. But unfortunately, they um, actually uh, took that away. So uh, I haven't tried it um, in a couple of days. I don't think it's available right now. I think they they're, they're working out the the to make sure that that's going to work effectively okay um david you're so welcome i'm glad that uh, i hope that helped that with your question there so a couple of other features things to point out and this goes to the those of you that are in the classroom or working with teachers or you're working with your staff and you want to do this act use jamboard there also is a max of 50 participants now you can share it out and people can be looking at it at different times that's fine but only 50 people simultaneously can be in the Jamboard and participate. So that can be a limitation if you have a really large staff or you have a, you can't share it out with like five classes at one time. So just to keep that in mind, 
A couple other things that you can do is, again, I just pointed out that share in view, uh, the Google Classroom, the ability to view or edit or copy for each student is magical. So you can create a template of what you want your students to do and then you share it out. Um, so maybe you make it as a group activity and you can share it that way. Uh, you can force a copy for those of you that are familiar with um, the changing the end of the URL to force a copy for a Google Doc or a slide deck or sheets. You can do the same thing in uh, Jamboard. So you can change that edit at the end to copy, uh, which is really cool. Uh, you can't do a preview, a template preview, but you can at least do the copy, which is a great way if you want to share it out and have folks take a look at it. Okay. Um, I love that you can duplicate your elements very easily so that you can make one and, and you can also duplicate your slides. So if I go up here and I wanted to duplicate, I could do that. I've maxed out my slides. I've got 20 slides, but if I had only 19, I could choose this one and duplicate it. I can also drag and reorder these by just simply moving them back and forth, which is really uh, easy to do. You just hit that little arrow at the top to drop it down so you can see uh, your slides or what they call frames inside of your Jamboard. Um, love that you can uh, resize and turn some elements, reordering the elements. The layering, having things on the back or the front is definitely a new feature that's great. Um, I love that you can download this as a PDF. So that means if you have a brainstorm session with your students and you want to save it as a portfolio artifact, uh, that's a great option. Or if you're working with your team and you're doing a planning activity or uh, your staff and you just want to be able to save that, you can do that as well. Um, you can use keyboard shortcuts like Control V and uh, Control C to duplicate things uh, and copy things, which is great. Um, I can... I love using my Bitmoji, so I can go to Bitmoji and copy it and paste it in and things like that. Um, works really well. Um, so those are some of the main uh, features I wanted to highlight that I think are really important to know about. The two limitations, again, are that max 20 frames, and it will tell you when you've hit your max, um, and also the maximum number of participants. So... Once you just start diving in and start playing around with Jamboard, because again, the interface is pretty uh, user friendly, some things you can do to level up your use of Jamboard, I wanted to point out things that I think are really cool. Uh, one is the use of emojis. You'll notice I added emojis in there um, because it serves as text. So it, it's a great visual cue. You can use it as your bullet points. Um, and because I put it in there either as display or any size text, I can resize them. <laughs> Yes, uh, uh, Andrea, if you if we've not met before, yes, Jen Moji, my, she leads a very exciting life. <laughs> um, the other cool thing is that you can add custom text, and I'm going to show you um, a couple of examples of ways you can do that to really level up the use of Jamboard. I love that you can add GIFs. They can either be on the canvas, which means they're movable and you can resize them, or you can add them as a background. It just depends on what you might want to use it. It's a great way to uh, create a template and then share it out with students or staff, however you want, uh, by using that force copy. And also um, the ability to share directly into Google Classroom is pretty cool as well. So that's how you can really level up um, with Jamboard. So when we talk about adding custom text or animating, this is pretty cool. These are two sites that I would recommend if you want to jazz up your Jamboards and you just want to make them more visually interesting. Cooltext.com is one of my go-tos because you can get animated text um, like this GIF right here that's, that's giving me that animation. I can customize it. Um, or another option is that you can use Text Giraffe, which is another new favorite of mine because... Uh, you can go in and it, it kind of makes the decisions for you. So if we go to cool text, I've got all these options and I've got all these choices. And so if you want to get something that's custom colored to your school or branding, you can do that. Uh, I can choose any one of these. Uh, I like the burning. I did an activity on um, energy, renewable and non-renewable energy. So I use the burning logo. I can have this say anything I want. And I apologize, I'm terrible at typing. All right, and I can type whatever I want. Uh, I can change the text. If you're not familiar with uh, Cool Text, it is a great site because I love using it also. I can choose any type of text I want. It's going to customize it. It's going to stay with that same burning logo here. It's just going to refresh here in a second. 
Uh, see, Global GEG is on fire because they're that awesome. Um, <laughs> thanks, Leslie. And thank you so much for tuning in, my friend. Uh, I, I'm trying to, to, to give you some good tips. I always want to give you something that somebody hasn't heard before. Uh, and good to see you, Pilly, as well. Uh, good tip. I'm, I'm glad you like that one. So I can just create this logo right here. And it's going to uh, give me this nifty little logo that I can download. Uh, and now I've got this new animated GIF that I can go back to my Jamboard. And I want to just add it. Just open up those pictures right there. And go to Upload. Magic is happening. It's thinking. And that picture is just the recent one we just downloaded. And I can upload it just like that. And I can resize it and it has all those properties. Um, so there we go. Global GEG is on fire in a good way, in a good way. Uh, then also I can use TextGiraffe, which is the other one. And this just comes in handy if you're trying to just, again, you don't have a lot of text formatting options um, like you would in slides and you wanna be able to jazz up uh, the interface or the activities you're doing. Text Giraffe is pretty magical because all I have to do is type in whatever I want. Click go and it automatically formats it for me and I just scroll through and pick the one that I want. So Text Giraffe is really cool. Uh, I've actually recommended um, letting students use this. I will point out there's one or two that might be iffy because it looks like a beer bottle. Just being full disclosure, but the rest of them are cool. Uh, and the poker chips might be, but we'll just, they're, it's trivia game chips. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, Denise, I'm glad you love the fonts. Yeah, it definitely is a great way to, to jazz it up. So now this one is really cool. All I have to do is I like this one. I just want to go here and I want to copy image. I'm going to go back and paste it in because I can use my shortcuts and I can just paste it in. So I've actually recommended, uh, I have a, a tutorial on, on using Jamboard and TextGiraffe, letting students make their own name logos. You could do this with your staff as well. So they have a little bit of personality um, doing a virtual meeting or a virtual lesson. Thank you, David, for looking out for me, my friend. Uh, letting them make their own names and then they can drag them around on the board for different activities like uh, a four corners activity. So those are two sites I would recommend you checking out to level up and add colorful and animated text. So the other thing is you can create those interactive presentations. Um, and I've got a couple of examples here and, and the one would be the four corners. And I'm actually gonna go down here and see if we can find the one that I got a, got a handful of these. So to find your Jamboards, you're just gonna to go to jamboard.google.com. I put the link at the beginning. Um, it's very easy for you to, uh, let's see here. I'm gonna pull up uh, that one. Um, if you just go to jamboard.google.com, you can pull up any of these, but you can do things like thumbs up, thumbs down. There it is, that's the one I was looking for. Here's an example of a uh, Four Corners activity where you let somebody add their name creatively, whether it's cool text or text giraffe, uh, and they can add it to it. And you can do the same thing with post-it notes, but this just is, again, uh, allows students or even your participants, your staff to have a little bit of, uh, show off a little bit of personality. Um, but this is now a drag and drop activity that I can, and you pose a question based on how you feel uh, for a check-in and a staff meeting or uh, a lesson with your students, they can easily drag and move themselves to where they where they uh, align with a statement. So you can put your statements there uh, and move them around on the board. So this now has become an interactive activity for you to use with uh, students. Um, let's see here. Denise, could you use a timeline? Just wondering, yes, because now you can draw a line on there or you could upload a background that is a timeline that you might have created in slides or Google Drawings. And yes, you could do it as a timeline. And now that you mentioned that, just for humor's sake, because this was one that was created for uh, Global GEG, we did this on a Jamboard. So uh, 
the the question was uh, when did you start teaching? And we we did a timeline of uh, and dropped our our the year we started teaching. So I might, I might be busting out some some people's information here, but it was it was a lot of fun. I'm gonna see if we can find it here. There it is. Here's a timeline that was created of all the rock star educators that are part of Global GEG. And it was, the question was, when did you start teaching? And it's and it was uh, created as a timeline. Uh, there it is. Kind of fun way to do a timeline. So here's an example of one. So love that you uh, asked that question. So keep, the, keep that in mind uh, as an option. Yes, it would be a great way for you to do that. Uh, all right, so uh, there was a question. How do you get the corners to stay again? So, Scott, what I did was I downloaded, I created it, and then I saved that as an image. So if I go here and I download this where it says save this uh, as a frame and I upload it as my background, my new background is not going to move. It's going to be exactly the way it is. All right? All right, so there you go. Uh, great question. So there's a number of different activities that you can create. Um, and I've got a, a number of them, and I'm going to share this uh, link out here for you all to take a look. This are some of my uh, templates that I've created, and it's it's actually kind of fun to create these these templates. Um, but here are some. So here's a four corners one right now uh, that you can grab there, Scott. That you uh, these are ones that you, you can make a copy of and and use to your heart's content. It won't move because I've loaded that as the background, and then you can use the um, add post-it notes or text or whatever you want to it. Here's that renewable activity, three truths and a fib. We got thumbs up, thumbs down. These will all work either as lesson activities or if you're working with your staff and you just want to have a fun uh, icebreaker activity uh, to check in. How are you feeling? Good, okay, bad. Um, there's a cell activity. So there's a handful of them and I'm still uh, designing more and I will be adding those um, so if you clear a frame, does the background go away? That is a fantastic question. No, the background does not go away. There you go. So there's, there's the, uh, check out those templates. Uh, you are too kind, my friend. You are too kind. All right. So a couple more things, cause I want to be mindful of your time. And I am so appreciative of those of you that have hung out with me, uh, today to learn a little bit about Jamboard. What I'm going to drop here in the chat is actually a collaborative Jamboard for you all to jump in. If you've never played on a Jamboard and you want to check one out, this is a your turn one right here. So, um, I've added a couple of options. Look at this. I love magically. I can see my, all of my anonymous animals that have joined me. All right. Uh, and I can see here, uh, this is an idea share. What is an idea you have for using Jamboard? What have you said? Oh, this inspired me. I could try this. So on our next slide here, grab a sticky note, grab a text box, drop it on there. Let us know what is an idea you have for using Jamboard. So I'm going to give you guys a, a couple seconds to add to that. See if, and, and I'm going to check the chat to see if there's any questions that you all have right now. <laughs> Oh, Luis, it's so good to see you, my friend. Yes, hashtag NYC19. Got to represent. All right, so uh, on that third slide, you'll see the option to add in some uh, Jamboard ideas. So you can add your sticky notes here. And I also made this, so there's the idea share, share here. I got some folks, look at this, some of folks jazzing it up, putting a lovely, I wish I was going somewhere like that, background, love it. Demo for math. That's one of the reasons my teachers really needed a tool for math. Um, and so here's an extra tip. There is a mobile app which has some extra capabilities that I think make it really powerful. So if you're working with your students and you want to have, if you don't have a touch device, like a touch Chromebook, but you have your iPhone or your Android device, you can open it up on your screen for a presentation mode, but then also you can have it open on your phone and use your phone and your finger to actually annotate. So you can model math problems using the touch capabilities on your phone. Ah, uh, Mel, you know, just brag about the fact that you're seeing beautiful sights. I love it. Uh, MLK life uh, timeline, right just in time, uh, getting ready to celebrate his birthday. I'm in Tucker right outside of Atlanta, so I'm actually... 
work for Atlanta Public Schools, which is right there um, where his, uh, the home where he grew up and actually the Martin Luther King Jr. Center is. Um, small groups, each with their own slide. I love it. We got some bell ringers, uh, the pro con activity, definitely. So many different ways you can use it. So um, as you can see, it was very easy for you all to jump in. Now I will tell you because this is in a private space like it's in a in a not in my own domain i'm not going to see who's doing what because you all are all anonymous you're not logged in to our domain um but you will be able to see that people are i can see that this if we were logged in i could see it, who anonymous skunk was okay um but that's just uh great great ideas thank you so much for sharing so i added in there also so a couple slides for uh, ideas but i also wanted to ask a question or there are questions or comments so i threw those in there as well so if anyone's got a question or comment they want to add to it this is kind of an ongoing uh option right here uh let's see would this in a oh let me see here let me throw this question up here um andrew so would this integrate or embed in a pair deck so it wouldn't embed but you can link you would have to link it in a pair deck activity so you would have to put the link that the kids would have to click on um, for example, if you were uh, same with Nearpod, if you were doing a Nearpod activity, you could put it in as web content. This would serve as web content. They would just need to click on the link to go to this activity. You can't, Im you couldn't embed what you're watching. You would just have to have that link there, but that's a great question. All right. Um, I think someone said website slide. I'm not sure if you're meaning my website or this, maybe this one right here. We'll grab this. I'll drop it. Here, this is all of the templates uh, as part of my Tech Tips 411 uh, website. So y'all continue dropping those awesome ideas in there. Uh, please do that. A couple other things. So we looked at the Four Corners activity. Again, anything you don't want to move, design it, save that image as a frame and upload it, and then add any movable elements on top of it, okay? Uh, so moving along here, I mentioned the mobile app. The mobile app is available on both iOS and Android. Um, so you can do that and uh, I'll use it to, in, uh, again, annotate. I, I recommend it for my teachers that didn't have the ability to write on a slate. You could use your iPad or your iPhone or your Android tablet or whatever to write uh, with your finger and um, drop it, uh, you know, use lot use it live I, I love this look louise you're putting all my business out there my friend yes tomorrow is my birthday and i hope i won't look any older than i do today that's the goal uh and did i just see here uh the wait are, do i have a birthday twin chantal we're, we are birthday twins happy birthday my friend sending you high fives for your birthday love it all right, so there is our mobile app. Definitely download it and check it out. The other cool feature about the mobile app is the ability to write with your finger and have it translate into text, which is kind of cool. So that was always the way to get uh, get around uh, not having a text feature, which is now built in. So I shared out those interactive activities. Please uh, borrow, share, adapt. If you have any suggestions of some templates you'd like to see, let me know. That's actually kind of like my fun therapy is being able to go in and create things. So uh, I'd love to know if there's a one that you, you know, uh, a template that you think I should add here to my collection. It's an ongoing one. All of those you will grab uh, and get a copy of. So let's recap. My goal was to do this in 45 minutes or less and I'm hitting the goal. I think I did all right. Uh, so did you learn the features of Jamboard. Do we feel pretty confident about what are the features of Jamboard? We walk through those elements. I do want to point out one other thing that's kind of cool is there is this zoom feature. So if you're trying to put a bunch of elements on there and you want to zoom in and really have students focus on it, I can definitely do that and be like, all right, those, so there we are. Learn our features of, of, of Jamboard. Can we get a check mark there? Yeah. And then I can go back to fitting it on my canvas. So do me a favor in the chat, give me a, a, a thumbs up or a yes that you feel good that you learned about the features of Jamboard. And then the second uh, goal was gain ideas for using Jamboard. Did you gain any ideas? That's what I want to know. Uh, did you at least get one thing you're like, I didn't know that or a tip or a trick. And you're like, okay, I can level up. I, I knew a little bit, but now I can do this. Uh, please let me know that. 
Um, I appreciate your time. You are rock stars. Happy 2021. 2021 is going to be an awesome year. I feel confident. I'd love for us to connect. You can sign up for my weekly tech tips. You can connect with me. I've got a YouTube channel, Tech Tips 411, where I share a ton of tutorials. If you're a Facebook fan, you can connect with me on Facebook. Um, check out my website. I've got a mobile app that has all the cool stuff from my website in the palm of your hand. All of those resources are available. If you just Google Tech Tips 411, you'll find me and Jinmoji living there in the uh, interwebs uh, and would love for us to connect if you would like to get some more resources, um, uh, let me know. Uh, and last but not least, I gotta give a shout out to the GEG Global community and the team here. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to share. Uh, Abbott and, and Stephanie were sharing about this series and I was like, ooh, 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 can I do Jamboard? Uh, and was so excited to share. And uh, the challenge was, could I present about Jamboard using a Jamboard? And I think that was tons of fun to do that. So if you haven't already checked out the resources at Global GED, please do so. Please go ahead and subscribe to our to the channel because they're always sharing awesome stuff. And uh, you can connect with me on Twitter. Uh, I'm APSITGen. I would love to connect with you. I so appreciate your time. You are awesome. Thank you so, so much. Um, I'm looking at the chat to see if there's any burning questions before I sign off. But I came in under uh, just on time. Uh, you all are rock stars. Thank you so, so much to everyone here. See you all uh, next time. Hopefully they'll let me come back and I can do some more fun stuff. Um, but please go ahead, uh, leave some feedback um, on uh, here. There's a feedback link. If you thought this session was beneficial, love to know. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Till next time. Take care, everyone.